The insect clan invades, and Mia shows why she's best girl. I am Haru Ren. Welcome to my review of episode 3 of Gen 3. So, spoiler warning, if you haven't seen this episode yet, go back and watch it now. But if you have, sit back, relax, and enjoy my review of episode 3 of Gen 3. The first part is Bunch of Misfits. Oh my god, they still haven't fixed the typo with the executive producers thing. I'm starting to think that it's just the font making the I and V stick close together to make an N. So Mia nervously tells her parents she's leaving to go study when she's really going to hang out with Dan in the Bakugan. Mia rolls out Ventry, voiced by Christina Nova, explaining that she has two sides to herself. So is it normal for human children to hide who they really are from their parents? I'm not really hiding who I am, they're just different sides of me. Mia's character overall is a pretty interesting one. One side of her is a rebellious teenager that likes to just have fun, and the other is a perfect straight-A student that has to be the perfect child for her hard-working parents. Especially since we get the impression Mia's dad is probably some successful scientist. Another late night? I think so. We've had some breakthroughs at the lab. So she's kind of like the stereotypical Asian child, where one side she likes to just go nuts and also carrying around the facade of the pure perfect child. And all that still resonates well when she Bakugan battles, as she's hyper competitive, talented, and athletic as well as she can be a leader when the time calls for it. Heck, in the first episode she falls like 10 feet from the air and superhero lands on a roof. I wonder if there's anything she isn't good at. Yes? Choosing what show to be on. <laughs> Honestly, Mia's character can be pretty relatable with the core audience who probably struggle to find their own identity themselves, Asian or not. Since Kayako Nashiro is Asian herself, she's able to tell that story with her vocal performance, so she was a really good cast choice for this role. So Dan and them go hang out at the, I guess, abandoned Bakugan Stadium since Bakugan is outlawed and nobody's using it. I would have thought the city would have turned this into a hockey arena by now or something. And they meet Murph the dog. Believe it or not, this dog actually has a voice actor. Ali Bacha! Ali Bacha voiced the dad in the animated movie The Breadwinner, which was nominated for an Oscar in 2018. I refuse to believe they only casted him in the role of a dog. So Dan and Drago are off their game during the brawl with Ventry and Mia because Dan accidentally joined the Dragon Clan in the last episode and he couldn't bring himself up to tell his friends about it. I don't really see why he has to keep this a secret. It's not like you sold your friends private information to the Dragon Clan. <coughs> no. Yeah, Drago made a big mistake, that's it. Wow, Dan, you really threw Drago under the bus like that? I don't understand why they wrote Dan's character to be so insufferable. Last episode, he shot down Drago, dragged him out of work, signed them both up for the Dragon Clan without Drago's input, now he's pinning the blame on Drago. Why does Drago even suffer this fool? Torch his ass! But before Drago can crack and tell them, Cage and Nilius show up and reveal the secret that Dan and Drago joined the Dragon Clan, but Dan and Drago resign their membership. We're not joining the Dragon Clan. It was a mistake. You betrayed us. Enjoy having your little brawls in this dump. A fitting place for a bunch of misfits. Ah, he said it. He said the thing. Even though Dan only joined on an impulse because he wanted to brawl again, Mia mentions it still wasn't cool that he lied to his friends, but then Mia gets a call from her mom. Oh no, my mom! Everyone, quiet! I like how this is probably the most realistic teenager presentation they did in this episode. Bye! Yeah! Bye, Mia's mom! Dan, what are you doing? My mom could have heard you! You're the one telling me that lying isn't cool, but... Oh, mommy, I'm studying now! I also really like that this shows the flaw in Mia's character, highlighting the hypocrisy of her lecturing Dan about lying to them, but then here she is lying to her parents. If that's not the quack to call in the stifling slimy... So, because Dan called out Mia's hypocrisy, the two have another brawl. The pacing of this brawl was a bit too fast, in my opinion. No joke, this brawl only lasted three minutes. They did their Pokemon moves, and when Dan and Mia are racing to the BAM, they are hand-to-hand -hand fighting until one big Pokemon move knocks Drago out instantly. Having trouble keeping up? Maybe if you study harder? Okay, Dan is starting to get a bit annoying. He treats Drago like crap, he lied to his friends for no reason, and now he's bullying Mia? Trouble keeping up? Maybe if you study harder? You're infuriating! Also, this scene where Dan and Mia are racing, for some reason they crop the image to zoom in closer to the back of Dan's head. If you really wanted to give the animation of Mia talking, just animate her talking! Now that I beat you, I get the spot for the first limited edition set! Take that! Dan apologizes to Mia for being such an asshole, and Mia suggests that they form their own clan. 
Yeah, this really didn't save Dan's character here. The original two Dans messed up too, but they learned through perspective. Here, this Dan learned because Mia threatened to kick his ass. Being honest, isn't that what you want? Honestly, I want to kick your butt! We continue with Brawl or Nothing. The Misfits are working on restoring the building to make their mod, and they are invaded by the Insect Clan. I told you those teleporting things would have very illegal uses. The Insect Clan, led by Backslash, voiced by Tyler Barish, says the Misfits do not look like a real clan and reveal the clans are all part of a battle league of underground fights and that clans challenge each other all the time to brawls. Kind of like the more civilized version of the War on Vistroia. I like that this was a thing reflective of what Dragonoid stood against. Backslash mainly seems like the focal center point of the Insect Clan here. The other two seem to just follow him around, they don't actually show much character. Backslash looks nothing like the design on his character cards, by the way. But it seems all his dialogue is very tech related. I'll go first, bug boy! KK, prepare to be shut down! Let's quit this out! One thing I don't understand about Backslash though is that his animation doesn't match his personality. He sounds like a jerk, but his animation makes him look like a shy kid. So the Insect Clan reveals that in order for the Misfit Clan to be officially recognized as a clan, they have to defeat one of the active clans, and if they lose, they won't get another chance. And if you lose, you'll be permanently banned. It's Brawl or nothing. Haha, <laughs> she said the thing! Yeah, no, this is already getting cliche. If we lose, we'll never be able to join the League. This seems risky. Mm -hmm. What the? Mia's mouth doesn't move with that last line of dialogue. They seriously messed up the lip sync this badly? Able to join the League. This seems risky. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine if I ever did that? So the team match is best two of three, and the first match is Backslash versus Dan. The action is extremely quick, though with Backslash showing the analysis glasses calculating short routes to the BAM zones. One BAM later, and Drago freaking lost again. Mia and Tildy face off next, and Mia waits for Tildy to calculate her route and uses it against her in order to win, with the final match being Griffin and Function. It seems like they got the first two fights over with in order to really focus on the character behind Griffin. This is the first time that Griffin is actually in a Bakugan brawl, and with their league membership on the line, it seems that he has trouble handling pressure, which adds another layer into his character. We have seen previously that he's a very energetic and confident person, but when it comes to high pressure situations, it seems like he just chokes. But Griffin regains his focus with the beat of the music blasting out of the arena, and I gotta say, the music is so loud, oh my god, I can't hear anything. I know that it's supposed to be intentional for the sake of the scene, but it's just painfully loud and annoying. But Trox manages to win, and with that, they are officially recognized as a clan, and Dan suggests naming the clan, the Misfit Clan, to close the episode. So that was episode 3, let me know your rating of the show was in the comments down below. This episode was alright with a great story, character development, it was really an episode of establishment of the group rather than anything too serious. Though Dan was kind of annoying in this episode with how he's been written and I guess the message of the Mia episode was it's okay to lie to your parents but lying to your friends is a big no-no? The action was really quick in this episode too. While it was still animated really cool, it didn't really leap that much for us to really take in and appreciate it more. I think because the focus was more on the human characters rather than the Bakugan. Regardless, I still enjoyed this episode, so I can't really say I was bored, so I'll give this a Baku good. Thank you for watching this review of Bakugan Gen 3. Be sure to press the like button and give us a subscribe for more awesome Bakugan content. I've been Haru Ren, thank god for Rapid Fire, and Ventry is based. Bye!